The opposition leader, Tony Abbott, has tonight delivered his budget reply speech, promising Australians he'll help with their cost of living pressures. The government says Mr Abbott should put up some alternative savings or otherwise support theirs. In the sometimes juvenile game that surrounds politics, the opposition today seized on the Treasurer, Wayne Swan, breaking a glass in an on-air interview as a supposed sign of a government with unsteady hands. Chris Yulman reports. This morning, all the pressure was supposed to be on Tony Abbott as he prepared to reply to the budget. Oh. Good ride, Mr Abbott. What's more invigorating, a cold ride in the morning or a preparing a budget speech? They both have their challenges. <laughs> OK. But a punishing week for the Treasurer culminated in an interview on AM with the ABC's Sarah Lane. When did Labor last deliver a surplus budget? Well, uh, we'd have to go back to the, to, the, to the 1980s, I should think. But Labor wasn't in power uh, when, that, when, uh, when that great growth spurt came through in the late 80s and uh, in the late 90s, uh, in the early 2000s. You can't nominate a date. I can't nominate a date. Tony Abbott delivers his budget and reply tonight. He says he'll offer a clear alternative. Well, what we'll need to see tonight is the... Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, we've just had a glass breakage here. Um, Tony Abbott delivers his budget and reply tonight. He says he'll offer a clear alternative. We'll need to see a very, very clear alternative tonight. We'll need to see Tony Abbott's savings or otherwise he'll have to admit he's going to be irresponsible and wreck the surplus. The Prime Minister dismissed this as a gotcha moment. Yes, I can. Uh, it's 1989-90, uh, but very happy to play a pop quiz with you. Uh, you know, uh, highest taxing government in Australia's history. Anybody got the answer? <laughs> Anybody? You've heard Mr Abbott talk about tax a lot. Highest taxing government in Australia's history. What's the answer? I don't know. I, can, I, can, I don't know. But what's you, the you answer? tell me. Howard government. The Howard government of, Mr, of which Mr Abbott was a senior minister. The man who lost his shadow finance job partly because of some muddled words on debt has a different view. Reeves the locator. It speaks for itself. There it is. That is us. Remember, that if that was your heart surgeon, would you go to him for an operation? If that is your brain surgeon, would you go to him to deal with, with what's inside the sacred vessel of your head? But he is actually the nation's major accountant running the finances of the nation. Guess what's going to happen to you, Australia? Sabra Lane's question shouldn't have come as a surprise because it was based on one the Treasurer was asked in Parliament yesterday and it's a coalition routine to pan Labor's past and claim it will never return a surplus. And the Gillard government has helped to entrench the idea that achieving surplus is the benchmark of good financial management. Wayne Swan did smash a glass this morning. That's less important than Tony Abbott smashing the budget surplus tonight. The Coalition's theme for question time was obvious. Doesn't the Prime Minister agree that Australians struggling with a higher cost of living deserve a Treasurer with a steady hand, who doesn't fumble with the figures and fiddle with the facts? And I agree with him that Australians do deserve a Treasurer with a steady hand, and they have one. They have one. They have a Treasurer who has delivered a budget has delivered a budget that will return the budget to surplus in 2012-13 exactly as promised. The Coalition's attack today swung back to debt because the government's seeking to increase the amount it can legally borrow to $250 billion. There was no mention by the Treasurer in his 30-minute address about the need to increase the debt ceiling, about the need to increase the debt ceiling by another $50 billion. This is because of the blowout. And after the blowout, you get the max out of the credit card, and then you get the freak out. There's nothing new about it. It's been known for ages. It was flagged in the midterm review. It was in all the budget papers on budget night. It was announced to the House by the Assistant Treasurer, but those people opposite are so incompetent they know nothing about it. For its part, the government was focused on only one thing, defining what should be in Tony Abbott's budget reply and setting him up to fail. Mr Abbott has an opportunity tonight to show he is more than a brawler, 
and that he's up to the responsibility of political leadership. If he doesn't walk out of that parliament having explained where his savings are coming from, if he doesn't accept the government's savings, then he will have failed a very major test. But Tony Abbott was never going to attempt to meet marks set by the government. My task tonight is to offer people a new direction which restores their hope in the future. It's not to detail an alternative budget, but to set out an alternative vision so that the Australian people can be confident that their government need not always be as weak and directionless as it is right now. Yeah. Mr Speaker, I understand that government should live within its means, value the money it holds in trust from you, the taxpayer, and above all else, observe the first maxim of good government, namely, do no avoidable harm. Chris Yellman reporting.